Hey guys, this is Matt from Matt's A Plus Car Care in Huntington Beach, California. And today we've got a 2012 Jetta in the shop with a check engine light on. So let's hook it up to the scanner and read the fault codes and see what it needs. All right, so we got our Rostec VADCOM printout here and the two faults that are stored in the ECM. We're gonna have throttle control, airflow at idle too low, P3078. And the second fault code is gonna be manifold barometric pressure sensor, also known as MAP sensor. And that is it for an implausible signal, P0106. So we're going to take a look at the engine and we're going to get this fixed right now. So the MAP sensor is, sits right behind the throttle body. It's this sensor right here. And it's basically bolted into the intake manifold. Alright, so first things first, we need to pop off this panel. Uh, of course, without breaking anything. Let me show you guys how to do that real nicely. Um, first, we're going to pop off this cover here. Uh, lift up on this tab, pop it off like that, place it here. Uh, next, we're going to release here, so our locking tabs are on each side. So we're going to push in, release, push in, and a release, and so now that's loose. Uh, next, we've got our hose clamp for our air intake. We're going to use these hose clamp pliers. These are a must if you work on Volkswagens. So we'll release it, put it right there pop off our air hose. Uh, next, we're going to pop off the air panel. These are held in, usually pretty tight, with four rubber grommets. Um, what we're going to do here is pop it up with a pry bar. Just like that. So now we'll take the whole panel off. Alright, so now that you've got the air uh, box cover off. Now we're going to take off these two secondary air lines here. I like to use a screwdriver and then just wiggle it in there and pop it off each side like that. This is the release here so you want to pop it off on both sides. Just like that. Now we'll get our hose clamp pliers. We're going to take this clamp off. Release. Pop this off. All right, next we're gonna unplug our throttle body. Uh, this is a six pin connector. To release these connectors, you wanna push in, push back on the tab, and then pull the whole connector off. You don't wanna just pull straight back on the tab because you might break, break the locking tab off. Um, all right, so ne uh, the next step is we're gonna take off the throttle body. The throttle body is held on with these four 30 Torx bolts and they basically bolt the throttle body to the plastic intake manifold. Um, be careful, these are th plastic threads. You don't wanna re-tighten them too tight and strip out your plastic threads. Uh, and I'm using a 30 Torx bit with my snap-on electric ratchet. And the last one is a little bit of an angle on it. All right, so now take the throttle body off now that we've got our bolts all off. And this is your throttle plate. So as you give the car gas, this is what opens and closes. And you can see the carbon buildup on the inside. And then here also on the back side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the throttle plate open and we're gonna get a rag here with some brake clean and we're gonna clean all of this carbon out. This is what is causing our airflow at idle to low fault. So here we got some brake cleaner. Now you'll just hold this throttle plate open. Be careful, it's, it's spring-loaded and the edges of this plate are very sharp. You don't want it to pinch your finger and cut you. It has happened to me. And so if you can see inside there, we're just wiping all of this carbon crud out. So you want to wipe top and bottom of the plate, the edge of the plate, and then you want to wipe the whole bore. So it should be real smooth. You see it's real clean now. So now it's clean the top side. Now 
looks pretty good. So that's done, you can just set that aside for now, and now we're gonna replace our map sensor. So for the map sensor, it's located right behind the throttle body right here. It's bolted in with one 20 Torx screw. Um, I like to pull this, this little uh, wiring harness retainer clip, pull this up, and then just get this out of the way. Like so, and there's actually this one, this map sensor connector, uh, so not all of these are zip tied, but this one's zip tied. We're going to actually want to cut that zip tie. So get that out of the way. Let's move our harness over. Uh, so this is the map sensor here. Um, we're going to remove the connector. So to remove these connectors, push in, push in, release the tab, and pull off. And then now we're going to get a 20 Torx quarter inch ratchet. Alright, so that's the one retaining screw for it. And then now we just pull off the sensor. So here's... All right, so this is the old map sensor. I'll flip it over and you can see all the oil that builds up on these. Uh, this is pretty normal. This is basically what causes the sensor to go out. Um, you've got the little resistor inside right here and it just gets covered in oil and fries the sensor. Um, the resistor basically measures manifold absolute pressure. So it's a pressure sensor. It basically measures vacuum and resistance ch of the resistor changes as vacuum goes up and down as you give it gas. This is your main load sensor for the engine, this is a mapless engine, so it just uses a map reference uh, basically to control the engine. Um, this will also cause the, uh, when these sensors go out, it will also cause the transmission to shift funny. You might have like hard shifting uh, and it will be caused by basically this bad sensor. So let's get a new sensor and get it changed out and get this thing fixed. Alright, here's our new sensor. Uh, it's a Bosch. It's made in Germany. You don't want to use cheapy sensors for your engine. Uh, specifically, you don't want to use made in China sensors because you're just wasting your time and they will fail on you. Uh, usually stuff made in China is bad right out of the box. So made in Germany, it's a Bosch name brand. It's what you want to use. So let's get this installed. All right, so we're just going to put in our new sensor. It's only held in with one bolt. The one side is like a dowel. And then we're going to put in our 20 Torx. Now there is a reflash available at the dealer for this exact fault, however I've had much better success with just replacing the sensor. If you do put in a new sensor and you are still experiencing faults, make sure that you do have the latest software version. Um, that's available at any dealer or any like really legitimate independent that has access to, to my Irwin and, and a Gecko ID and Otis so software. Um, I don't even have that at the moment, I'm still working on getting that software. Um, one more thing, a couple cases I've seen after doing the sensor and if the fault still comes back, you may need to repin this connector and put in new terminals. I have seen that a handful of times as well. So what you'll do is basically cut the harness here, get yourself a new connector, get yourself two uh, basically terminals. They come in a, a, like a pigtail with two terminals on, on one. And you'll basically put in four new connectors uh, or, excuse me, four new terminals with a new connector and then you'll butt connector them in here. Uh, I have had that fix a few cars as well um, after the fault has come back with a new sensor. But I'd say 95% of the time uh, th this f these two faults will be fixed with a new map sensor and cleaning and adapting the throttle body. That's the fix like 19 out of 20 times and real rarely you'll have to repin the connector if you keep having the map sensor fault come back. Alright so we've got our new map sensor installed Connector is reconnected. Now we're going to put on our throttle body. Uh, we already did clean it, so let's get that reinstalled. Like so. And get our four bolts here. And these are just plastic threads, so don't, don't, you know, don't tighten them too tight. Just, just tight, just snug. Don't strip out the plastic. That'd be bad. And then you have to put in a new intake manifold or get creative with some JB Weld.
And this O-ring, this green ru thick rubber O-ring, that is reusable. You don't have to replace it. It's totally fine to just reuse it. And then this last one is kind of at a little bit of an angle. I'm using a extension that has a wobble bit on it so I get that little bit of angle out of it. Like so. Now I'm just snugging them up by hand. Like so. All right, next, just reconnect your throttle body. Make sure it clicks all the way in. Next, we're gonna put on our air intake. A uh, little trick for these, if you see this little line right here on the throttle body and this line on the intake, these line up. That's how you know you have it at the right angle. So line those up and then we'll get our hose clamp pliers. Like so. Uh, next, we're going to connect these. Make sure that when you reconnect these secondary air lines that you fully clip in both sides, both this side and this side. If these pop off, you can get faults. You can get like um, uh, vacuum leak faults or like uh, lean faults potentially or secondary air faults, uh, which obviously you don't want. I always like to uh, shoot some WD-40 on the O-ring. It'll make your life a lot, lot easier to reconnect these. So just a little WD-40. And then now we'll re-click these two secondary air hoses back on. And then just make sure they're clicked, like so. Make sure they're fully clicked in on both sides. So that feels good. Wipe up the WD-40. And then let's get our uh, engine air panel. Hook back up our air hose. Hook back up our front air inlet. Let's get our little cover plate. Grab my tools. And then lastly, don't forget to put on the hose clamp. I see so many of these cars come in with it not clamped or, you know, and then this, this pipe is basically off and loose and, you know, the last mechanic that worked on it forgot to clamp the clamp and now the poor customer has been driving for a year just sucking dirt straight into their motor. Got to make sure you always do a thorough job. Always double check all your work. All right, so that's it. You got a new map sensor. We got a clean throttle body. Now let's show you what we do with the scan. All right, so we've got a brand new map sensor installed and we've got our throttle body all clean. Now let's clear the faults and we're gonna adapt the throttle body and then that's gonna be it. The car's gonna be fully fixed, check engine light's gonna be off and the customer's gonna be all good to go. All right, so we've got our scanner hooked up. I'm using a wireless scanner. It works really well. It's VAGCOM, Rostech.com is the website you can get it from. If you're a Volkswagen owner, you have multiple Volkswagens, highly recommend you invest in Rostec VAGCOM, um, also called VCDS. This is like seriously legit software uh, for Volkswagens and Audis. It pretty much can do just about anything that you can do with a dealer scanner, uh, except um, stuff that you would need like a gecko ID, password, and username for, which would be, for instance, coding like keys or coding uh, engine control uh, modules, ECMs, or like coding in instrument clusters. Other than that, this can do literally everything a dealer scanner can do. Um, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to clear our faults and then we're going to adapt the throttle body. Very easy procedure. So select 01, which is going to be engine. And it comes up with ECM part number, engine, software version, workshop coding. Uh, hit fault codes. So we've got our two faults, throttle control, airflow idle too low. And then we've got our second fault, manifold barometric pressure sensor and plausible signal. So we're going to clear both those faults. They're fully cleared. And now we're going to adapt the throttle body, so go to basic settings, 04. And then the basic settings for throttle body is going to be 60, so 60, go. Okay, so right now it's throwing an error, so it says error, engine off, engine on. 
So sometimes this happens when you try to adapt your throttle body and what it's telling you is that it just wants you to start the engine, shut it off, and then turn the key back on. Uh, it just needs that restart and then it'll let you adapt the throttle body. So right now I'm just gonna start the engine and then shut it back off. All right, so I just started the car, shut it off, and turned the key back on, and then re-logged in. Let's scan for faults again, so no faults, that's a good start. Hit basic settings, hit 60, and go. And then now it's gonna give you your angle values. And basically right here, hit on off. And it's gonna say basic settings on, it's gonna adapt the throttle body, so it runs a full sweep of the throttle plate. And then these are gonna be your throttle angles. So you've got sensor one, sensor two, and then right here, adaptation okay. That's what you wanna see. So that's perfect, that's great. Hit done. And just make sure that there's no faults that popped up. So no fault codes, that's fantastic. And that's it, the car is fixed. All right, that's it guys, thank you for watching. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you guys would like to see more Volkswagen fixes like this, check engine light fixes, various tips and tricks working on Volkswagens, please hit the subscribe button, uh, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, you just leave them in the comments. Thank you guys so much. Happy driving.